You know, nowadays it's not very common for people to root their Android devices. To most, it could be seen as a hassle, unnecessary, and scary. But there are still a few warriors out there that root their device to this day. They're the type of people who will laugh at anyone who argues that you'll lose your warranty if you root, or they'll say, back in my day, rooting was 10 times harder. If you're one of those rooted users, this video is for you. I've come up with some of the best rooted Android applications, most of which are from the Play Store, and I've made sure to only include apps that are still working, actively updated, and not that well known. Like, I'm not about to review Magic's Manager because everyone already knows what that is. Also, if you're interested in watching my videos in Spanish, be sure to check out my second channel called How Two Men in Español. So let's start with the first rooted app. It's called Migrate. If you were old enough to remember Titanium Backup, this app is sort of like the modern version of it. I say that because it's a great backup and restore option for when you're switching ROMs. It'll back up all your apps, app data, permissions, SMS, call logs, contacts, default keyboard option, ADB state, and a lot more. And once the backup process completes, it'll tell you how to restore all of your data in Twerp Recovery. It'll show you the flashable zip files it created, so you need to jump back into Twerp and then wipe data and cache, flash your new ROM, and then flash all of those zip files that Migrate created. Afterward, make sure to flash Magis to root the custom ROM. Boot up and you'll get a notification to continue the restoration process. That's it, simple and easy. Permission Ruler is a rare gem on the Play Store because it's not very well known, but oh goodness, dude, it's very useful. If you don't have root, it will let you manually manage the permissions of all your apps, but the real fun comes when you are rooted. It will automatically turn off permissions for every app when the screen is off and then re-enable them when you unlock the phone. So you no longer need to worry about apps accessing your files or getting your location while you have your phone locked. This increases privacy and your standby time since there won't be as many background activities going on while your phone is locked. And if you still want certain permissions for an app to be enabled, such as the location permission for Google Maps or the microphone for a Zoom meeting, you can allow those permissions to be turned on. Lastly, you can easily revoke or grant a certain permission for all of your apps with a single tap of a button. Root Activity Launcher is another unique app with a special function that you won't find anywhere else and it does cost a dollar, so just keep that in mind. If you're not rooted, just like any other launcher, you can open basic activities, but if you are, you can start activities and services that were purposely hidden by the developer or launch activities or services with permission requirements. Plus, you can add those activities to your home screen as a shortcut. For example, I can easily launch the Ender 10 Easter Egg activity without needing to jump into the system settings, or I can also relaunch the Android setup process, which is only accessible when you boot up your phone for the very first time to restore a backup from the cloud. And as if that wasn't enough, you can easily disable activities and services for every app. Be careful what you disable though, because it can't stop the app from working. Saturation is the simplest app out of the bunch. It basically allows you to change the display saturation level to make the colors pop more, or you can lower it a bit if you prefer faded colors. It's also handy if your phone's manufacturer oversaturated the screen by default. Permissions on Android have become stricter with every new update, which is a good thing if you care about privacy. However, there is still a permission that is very common among most apps and older Android versions up until Android 11 that don't manage it well. It's the storage permission. Once you grant an app storage access, that app can then use the whole shared storage space freely and can see every photo, document, or video that you have in that space. There are a couple of problems with this. The first is that poorly designed apps will keep their files in this space and won't delete their data if the app becomes uninstalled. Another problem is that you can't control which of your data the app can see and use. And lastly, the granted app can read a majority of your files created by other apps. That's why storage isolation is a convenient root required app. It lets you isolate each app storage by creating an extra folder in its current data folder. That way, you can delete every file it creates when you uninstall the app, and you'll be able to manage what files that app can access. However, not every app needs to be isolated because you may break certain features within them. Luckily, storage isolation lets you know what apps it does not recommend to isolate, such as YouTube, and it also lets you know which of your apps have been verified to have no behavior of abusing shared storage. And as I said before, you can choose what folder should be accessible to each app. 
For example, if I don't want Instagram to see my downloaded pictures from wallpapers or some of my saved photos from my download folder, I can disable those folders within Instagram. It's a very powerful app and it's free to download, but you will only be able to isolate at most three apps. Afterward, you need to pay $6 to unlock the full version. If you're rooted or flashed a ROM, you most likely use Twerp Recovery or something similar. Now Twerp is great, it's the best recovery around, but it has one small issue. It won't back up your internal storage. So when you transfer phones or completely wipe data, everything in your internal storage, including photos, music, game data, downloads, and more, will be gone. With to patch, it can now have Twerp back up all your internal storage on top of the partitions you could already back up. Now obviously backing up your internal storage will take up a ton of space, so it's much easier to connect an OTG hard drive or an SD card and have everything back up to that. It saves you the hassle of having to transfer everything to your computer and then back onto another phone when you want to restore it. To enable this in Twerp, simply go into the patch, tap the blue button and select patch. It will patch your current recovery and produce a new one that now backs up all your internal storage. The next couple of apps are designed to improve your battery life. The first one is Servicely. This app will improve your standby time immensely by stopping any apps or services from running in the background when the screen is turned off. So you can hibernate apps or services on a per app basis. Or you can just toggle a setting that hibernates every app all at once when the screen is off. Just keep in mind that your apps won't notify you of any incoming notifications when you do this. And when you disable a service, it may be vital to the functioning of your system. So only disable apps or services that you know wake clock the screen constantly and won't break your software. If you're not sure which of your apps or services cause way too many wake locks in the background, you can use better battery stats to find them. After allowing it to run for an hour or two while you leave your phone locked, it will narrow down which of your apps are draining your battery by causing partial wake locks. Then, once you find that leech, you can uninstall it or hibernate it with service leak. Better Battery Stats also supports non-rooted devices, but you'll need to run a few ADB commands on your computer to get it to work. If Better Battery Stats doesn't find any apps that cause a ton of wake locks, you won't really need to use Servicely. Instead, you can use Naptime. As I said, Servicely disables every background app, while Naptime enables Android's Doze power saving functionality a bit faster. By default, Doze takes a few hours to kick in since you need to leave the phone flat on a table and you can't touch it or wake it. When you enable aggressive doze in nap time, your device will enter doze modes in minutes after the screen goes off. You can even disable motion detection so when you move the phone around, the device will still stay in doze mode. And for that cherry on top, you can choose to automatically disable the Wi-Fi, mobile data, Bluetooth, and location as soon as the doze kicks in. Another great aspect of rooting is being able to customize the look of the entire UI tremendously. There are various theming engines out there, most of which are a bit outdated. However, the one I currently use is Swift Installer and it still gets updated. It will allow you to change the accent color or background color to any color you'd like. The theme style, status bar icons, the transparency of the quick settings panel, and the system settings icons. From there, you can theme most of your apps to have an AMOLED dark theme. It's a straightforward theme engine that works like a charm. It's not as powerful as Substratum theme engine, but if you like a consistent dark theme, this is an excellent choice. Last but not least, I wanted to show off an app that isn't in the Play Store, however, you can find it within the Magis Manager app. With the release of Android 10, Google decided to disable the animations and transitions and the dock in the Recents page for when you switch to a third-party launcher. It's pretty annoying and one of the main reasons why I've chosen to stick with the stock launcher on most of my phones. However, if you're rooted and have Launcher 2 as your default launcher, you can use Quick Switch to re-enable the transition to the Recents page with the addition of the dock. Anyways, that concludes the best rooted Android app for 2020. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a huge thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to know what are the best Magis modules, I made a video about that a while back. So click that eye in the top right corner if you're interested in that. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter or Instagram or my Reddit page at HowToMen to follow up on everything that we do. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!